looking at a new lake or fishing a, a lake for the first time, you always want to do a little bit of homework before you get out on the water. So one great technique that you can use to prepare for a day out on the water is looking at your state's fish and wildlife website. So this is a lake up in New Hampshire that I uh, fish pretty often, and I found this just up on their website. They have these bathymetric contour maps, uh, basically maps that show you the lay of the land underwater, and they, they give you kind of an idea of how um, the structure is laid out on the lake. And so what you can do is kind of look, do your homework the night before or a few days before, and highlight some areas that are naturally going to uh, hold fish. So you read these maps by looking at the lines. And basically, the closer the lines are together, the more steep the drop-off. Alternatively, the further, they weigh, or the further away they are, the more gradual that drop-off is. So here, you're just going to want to look for irregularities. You're going to want to pinpoint the spots where it's dropping fast when it's close to that shallower water. So for example, right here, the lines are super, super close together. That tells you that it's a really steep drop off and it goes almost right from shallow to very deep, as opposed to these areas, these flats that are about 10 feet deep all throughout. And so it's color coded, 40 foot depth range, obviously is this darker blue, 10 foot or less is this, this white color. So basically, you wanna look at the color and the proximity of the lines to one another in order to read the depth of these maps. So you always hear uh, different voices in the fishing community talking about finding the creek channel. A lot of times those southern guys or guys out west will talk about the creek channel. And everything you want to do revolves around the creek channel. And this is something that's super frustrating for me as an angler from the northeast. When I was younger learning all of this stuff, I was like, creek channel? <laughs> this is a natural lake. There is, there, are, there is no creek channel. And what I learned over a lot of time, um, you know, trying to find the creek channel in lakes that just didn't have one, is that what they mean by that is you want to find deep water that's adjacent to shallow water. So the first thing when I look at this map, if I have not, and I have fished this lake before, I will say that as a disclaimer, but if I didn't, <laughs> and I was looking at it fresh, the first places that I would probably fish are right in here, right in here, right in here, and probably right in here. And so the main reasons for that, um, as you can see, the, the, it, look for the trend in all of those examples. There's deep water here, and then there's shallow water adjacent to it. Deeper water here, shallow water adjacent. Deeper water, shallow. Okay. And so that's the key. You want to find either things that resemble a creek channel, so deep water or a trough surrounded on either side by shallow water, so like here, that's a good example. You see this a lot actually in natural lakes, you guys um, up north. You see this, it's called a saddle. If you have two islands, which are often near each other, if you have two islands, a lot of times you'll have shallow water that almost bridges the gap between them, and there will be deep water on either side. This can be one of the most underrated spots in the entire lake, and a lot of times it holds really big fish. As you can see here, the water is about 20 feet deep on either side of the saddle, and it's a really thin thing. This, this could be only a few feet wide, but it has a flat here, it has a flat here, and because I know this lake, I know that there's also a lot of rocks that line the shorelines of both of these islands. So all in all, uh, it can be a really good smallmouth or largemouth spot <clears throat> pretty much year-round because this water here, 20 feet, that's deep enough for those midsummer fish. It's also deep enough for those pre- and post-spawn fish who are dropping off in deeper water, and obviously the shallow water here and here um, is good for the spawn. So um, that's immediately one of those, those spots where, that's going to catch my attention. Always look for islands and things like that. You want to find humps too. There's no humps here, but you know, say there was a, a patch of shallow water right in here. There's 40 feet of water all around it, 30 feet of water all around it, and this came up to say 10, you would definitely want to fish there. And so this other spot right here, it's kind of the opposite of this. Okay, So here we have a saddle. Here this is like a trough. So you have shallow water off to either side, and then deeper water that goes in between it. And it actually opens up nicely here too, um, but you would really want to concentrate your efforts right here where those fish are pinched. And that's for, for very obvious reasons. Fish that's not feeding, that's not active, can just drop off into this deeper water, and when it is feeding, it'll just come right up on these two flats and find that bait. So this is another place 
I would target immediately. And then over here, this is a little bit of a different spot from what we just talked about. This is a super, super steep drop off. And this is another type of place that you would want to target. Because it's got such deep water, this comes off to, I think it's 30 feet, 20, 30 feet right out here. That's like right up to the shoreline. So what you're going to find, especially in the spring around this time of year, fish are you know pre-spawn and some fish are spawning and some fish are post-spawn. This is the type of area you want to target because you have deep water here where those bigger fish that are not active or might be post-spawn females, they'll drop off into this deep water and you can still catch them. But those other fish that are spawning or more active or feeding will move right up here. So you want to find a home range that encompasses deep water and shallow water. So that's the main trend that you're going to find. Deep water, shallow water. Okay, deeper water, shallow water. Deep water, shallow water. So basically, to summarize what I've said, you want to find an irregularity in the contour of the lake. Ideally, an irregularity that encompasses deep water and shallow water being close to each other. Those are the areas that you're going to want to target. So if you're looking at this lake, first time ever, you're going to quickly see, okay, boom, irregularity. Boom, this area around the islands, irregularity. So basically those patterns are the types of patterns that repeat themselves time and time again on lakes all over the country. It doesn't have to be a reservoir with a creek channel and creek arms. Uh, you don't have to chase the shad up there. You can look for crayfish or baitfish, perch, whatever it is on your lake. They're all going to associate with those areas of irregularity. So that'll help you target fish. It'll save you time on the water. And hopefully it'll increase your success when you go to a new body of water that you've never fished before.